All right, let's talk about using Windows Server Backup. Now, hilariously enough, Windows Server Backup isn't actually installed by default. So if I come over here in Server Manager and I go to Tools, and I'm going to see down here at the bottom Windows Server Backup. But when I select it, it says, yeah, um, Windows Server Backup is not installed. Okay. Cool. You gave me the tool, but you didn't give me the backup utility. That's actually not a huge issue. Let's go ahead and install it real quick. So we're going to manage, add roles and features. And this is going to be a feature because it's not specific to a role. Here is Windows Server Backup down near the bottom of our list there. And so I'm going to click Next and go ahead and install. And then since there's not much going on here, I'm going to pause the video while it does this install real quick. Okay, so my Windows Server Backup uh, has finished installing. So I'm going to click Close to get rid of that. And now when I go to Tools, Windows Server Backup, now we actually have something. All right. There are some significant limitations to Windows Server Backup. In fact, I think there are some much, much better third-party options for backup than Windows Server Backup. But this is what we have that Microsoft has given us, so we'll at least take a look at it. Now, you'll notice right here that it supports online backups to Azure. That's Microsoft's cloud hosting service. And we can configure... Um, we can configure this to do online backups, and that gives us an off-site backup. Um, notice it says here, secure the server from corruptions and other threats by backing up the server to Azure. There are some advantages to that. There are some real disadvantages to that as well. So I will let you think through whether you want to do that on your own. If I'm going to create a local backup, then I'm going to click on local backup right here. And there's not much because I just installed it. So I'm going to right click on local backup and I can do a backup schedule or a one time backup. So backup schedule is will run a scheduled backup on a regular basis. A one time backup is going to be a one off. I just want to do this backup right now. Recover, obviously recover information from a previous backup and then configure for performance settings if I can say this correctly, is going to let me determine how do I want this to work. Uh, so normal backup performance, do give me faster backup performance. Um, so normal backup is going to do a full backup. A faster backup is going to do an incremental backup. So I can also customize for each one, how do I want them to back up? Now a full backup will back up everything, that's normal. An incremental backup will just back up what changed. So when you want to recover from an incremental backup, you have to recover, if you're doing recovering everything, you have to recover the latest full backup and then every incremental backup since then. All right, so that's my options for performance. To do a one-time backup, we'll click Backup once. And we can backup using Scheduled Backup options or give us our... And we haven't set up a Scheduled Backup. That's kind of nice, though. I can set one up and then say, you know what? I, instead of having it run the schedule, I want you to run right now. I'm going to use different options. And then I can do a full server backup or a custom backup. Full server is going to give me everything data, application, system state, you name it. It allows me to do what we'll sometimes refer to as a bare metal recovery. So using this, I can recover from bare metal. No operating system, no nothing. Now obviously I'll have to install an operating system to get to Windows Server Backup to recover, but it allows me to do that recover if everything goes away. If I want to only back up specific things, then I'm looking at a custom backup. So let me click Custom Backup and then click Next. Now, here are the items that I can select for backup. So I'm going to click Add Items, and I can do a bare metal recovery. That's everything. The system state, which is a system configuration, and then specific volumes. So I can back up the C drive and the system state, but not everything. Or I can pick 
specific things off of each one of these including specific folders, specific files. Now, there are, let's say I had Hyper-V running on this system, and I had some virtual machines here. I could also pick specific virtual machines to back up. So different Windows applications will integrate with Windows Server Backup and now will allow you to do specific backups of whatever they have. So I'm going to click OK. We've now selected some items. Advanced settings will let me set inclusions or enable the volume shadow service for volume shadow copies. Now here's one of the limitations and that is there are only certain things I can back up to. So I can back up to a local drive or I can back up to a remote shared folder. But I can't back up to, there's a handful of other things that I can't back up to. So one of the things that we used to use for backups a lot was tape drives. And that has kind of fallen by the wayside, but tape drives are actually making a comeback now. Because if you're doing local drives, you're moving drives in and out, it's a little bit of a problem. Tape drives will allow us to store data on inexpensive tapes that we can move off-site and it puts us in a little more control of our backups than sending them off to a cloud provider and asking them to keep our backups for us. So I'm going to go next. I want to back up to the E drive and then here's where I would actually start my backup. Now I'm not actually going to run it right now but this gives you the idea of how this process is going to work. Um, now, like I said, Windows Server Backup will get the job done. The big limitations I see, it's not as flexible in its backup. It's a little bit better than it was a couple of iterations ago. It's not as flexible in what it'll allow you to store data on. Um, so we're backing up across the network, we're backing up to Azure, or we're backing up to a local physical drive, local hard drive. Um, I like some other options, but if it's the only backup that we have, it's still something we should use. Uh, if you can do a better, more flexible backup, get a better, more flexible backup. If you don't have one, this at least gives you the option to back up your data. General rule of thumb, you should have at least three different uh, backups in at least two different locations, and at least one of those should be off-site. So think three, two, one. Three different backups minimum, uh, two different locations, and at least one of which should be off-site. Now there's a lot more we could go into about backup strategies. Uh, Windows Server Backup, like I said, kind of limits them to some of those. Um, but at least it gives us something. So now that you have an exposure to this, you'll be able to back up your servers using Windows Server Backup if that's the only option you have available to you.